Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to get started in just a minute once we give everybody a chance to come on in from the waiting room. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today. We'll get started in just about 30 seconds as we still have people coming in. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and get started today. Uh, hi, welcome to today's webinar on SIA's new climate platform, uh, Climate United. I am Maggie Bittner, Head of Education, and I have Chris Stan Steinkamp here joining me, who is uh, SIA's uh, Director of Advocacy. Um, we will be recording this session and uh, will be posted to our website later today if you want to share it or go refer back to it. Uh, we'll also be using uh, the Q&A tool that you can find at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so go ahead if you have any questions and submit them there. And Chris and I will both keep an eye on those. Um, and I think that's it for the housekeeping today. Chris, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Maggie. Um, thank you all for joining me today or us today. Um, we really appreciate it. And we're super excited about our new climate platform that we want to take you through. Um, so I'm going to spin through this rather quickly. Um, and then, as Maggie had mentioned, we'll have time for Q&A at the end. So, um, so Climate United is SIA's platform to unite the winter outdoor industry, again, around meaningful climate action. As you all know, climate change is a direct threat to the winter outdoor industry. And we listened to our members and felt that SIA's leadership on this issue was really important to them. Um, there are so many member businesses that want to get involved but really didn't have the guidance they needed, um, so they hadn't engaged yet. And as their trade association, it was important for us to provide this leadership and the added value with a platform that's built for them and for you. And we hope that in doing so, we'll bring new companies into the climate conversation and provide an opportunity for every winter outdoor industry to meaningfully lead on climate. Um, so this decade kicks off with a collective commitment and a roadmap that provides uh, the commitment and the guidance to every company in our industry to lead on climate change. So let's just back up a second and you know, ask ourselves, well, why are we even doing this? And I, I'm, I hope that it's pretty academic for most of you, um, but just to recap why, um, you know, our planet is getting warmer and it's threatening not just our snowpack, but you know, the, our ecosystem in general. It's, you know, we're seeing droughts and devastating storms and wildfires like we've never seen before this year. And so, you know, it's threatening the permanent health of our planet and life as we know it. And our $76 billion industry is dependent on consistent winter seasons. Um, they've already become shorter and more volatile and the Northern hemisphere has already lost a million square miles of spring snowpack. And under current emission scenarios, if we keep doing what we're doing, every location in the US is projected to see some reductions in winter recreation season lanes, you know, 50% by 2050 and up to 80% by 2090. Um, but on the business side, you know, climate change is already impacting our supply chains and our retail networks. It minim it's, you know, addressing climate change minimizes that business risk and it improves efficiency and reduces costs. But thirdly, our customers are asking for us to do this. You know, they're using their buying power to drive change and demanding that the brands that they buy lead on issues that they value. Uh, millennials, as you know, are one of the largest generations in history and they're coming into their prime spending years right now. And in a 2018 study, 70% of millennials care a great deal about climate change and 87% of them uh, gauge success of a company based on standards that extend far beyond financial measures. So, so our industry has a responsibility to protect the planet and the ecosystems, but also it's an opportunity for us to build um, our industry and our businesses to become more efficient and more profitable. And just to talk about millennials for just another second, um, 
three out of four millennials accept that climate change is a fact. And 50% of them make up the global workforce now. And as I just mentioned, 87% of millennials believe that the success of a business should be measured um, in terms of more than just financial performance. And in addition, BlackRock, the global investment company, has said that climate change has become a defining factor in companies' long-term prospects and how they evaluate their investments. So it's really clear that you know, climate change is a moral issue for all of us, of course, but it's also a business imperative. And if you're a business and you're not taking action on climate change, you're missing a business opportunity. So let's get into Climate United for a few minutes. Um, climate United is our climate platform that builds unity across our industry and provides a roadmap for meaningful climate action. And it's broken down into two parts. The first part is the Winter Outdoor, climate, the Winter Outdoor Industry Climate Pact. And it's the first step towards action. And the pact is an industry-wide commitment and a signal of our intent to take science-based climate action. The second part of Climate United is the 1.5C Business Playbook, which I'll talk to you about in a second. And it's for SI member businesses that want additional guidance to, make, to meet those commitments that, that are outlined in the pact. And it's a proven roadmap that gives every company in our industry the ability to lead on climate. So regarding the Winter Outdoor Industry Climate Pact, um, it is a set of six achievable principles that are gonna show our industry's collective commitment and our unity and our leadership to meaningfully address climate change. We know that companies that set a public commitment are the ones that are most likely to follow through. So this is an entree for every company to dip their feet in the water and take that first step. But it also shows our ambition and our unity as an industry. It's a collective and really important signal that our industry is united on climate change. And it's a first step toward real tangible goals. So we need every company in our industry to, um, to step up and take action. And we're showcasing the businesses, the businesses that are leading the way and inspiring others to do the same. So there's also a recognition part of the pact. You know, we know that, you know, the businesses that are part of the pact, um, we want to continue to share that with industry peers and the media, which will grow awareness and hopefully participation. Um, we're going to track our industry's progress in an aggregated way and publicly recognize our collective impact each year at the snow show. Um, we also are going to give our participants, um, the, the signatories in the pact, access to a resource called the Climate Hub, which I'll talk to you about in a second and all of the resource on it, including invitations to workshops, content, access to an open source sharing hub, and everything else that that entails. And again, I'll get into that in, in a few minutes. Um, but also going back to what we were just talking about, consumer, about consumers, the pact is a signal of strength and a commitment to our consumers. And it's gonna amplify visibility and brand value. So we're committed to engaging communities in the good work that all of the brands who signed the pact do um, and the commitment that they've made. And so all of the signatories will be featured um, in, our, in our snowbound festivals, our consumer festivals in 2021. And for those of, the, of, those of you who don't know, um, snowbound are, are two festivals that, we've, um, that we're producing in fall of 2021 in New England and the Rockies that reach hundreds of thousands of consumers each year. And climate change will be a big part of that as will Climate United and all of the brands that are part of this. But the biggest part of the pact is accountability. And you know, every good pact has to have some teeth in it and it has some accountability. So you know, we ask that all signatories make a commitment to achieve this, those six principles and submit a plan to meet them within 12 months of signing the pact. You know, we wanna make sure that every company that signs this pact has the genuine intent to meet those principles. And so really only businesses that can follow through on this ambition should join the climate pact. So here's the, here's the pact. And it starts off um, by saying that as a winter outdoor industry, we are publicly formalizing our commitment and building unity with our peers to address climate change and signal our commitment to a zero emissions future. We will make our best efforts to address the following principles. Number one, recognizing that our industry contributes to the climate crisis and are therefore publicly addressing climate change as a top management priority for our business. 
Number two, focusing our best efforts to meet the science-based targets, reducing emissions by 50% by 2030 and becoming 100% net zero before 2050. Number three, committing to work with our supply chain partners to meaningfully reduce emissions from product manufacturers and manufacturing and transportation. Number four, leveraging our influence to advocate for state, federal, and international climate policy. Number five, aligning our business strategy with climate science through our, our corporate values, our financial investments, our product and service offerings, and our consumer marketing. And the last one is sharing progress with SIA annually, which will, which will enable us to aggregate the information and recognize our industry's progress each year, and it hopefully inspires more uh, businesses to join us. So that's the pact, and we hope that everybody on this call will consider joining it because it's really important that everybody in the winter outdoor industry becomes a member of the pact to show unity and forward progress on climate change. So the second part of Climate United is the playbook. And so let's talk about that second part for a second. And this is for SIA members that want some guidance on reaching the commitments that we just discussed. Um, we didn't want to just ask businesses to commit without providing guidance. So this part gives SIA members the roadmap and the tools to execute their plan to meet the science-based targets. And you know, we didn't want to recre recreate this from scratch. So we researched existing science-based platforms that could be really valuable as an asset to our members looking for help. And we landed on the 1.5C business playbook. And it's a proven guide that's been developed by the Exponential Roadmap Initiative, which is a group in Europe. And it's currently being used by businesses worldwide to align with the science-based targets in a very achievable and targeted way. Um, it's a flexible roadmap for any brand, large or small. And that's really what we love about this because our industry is made up of small brands and large brands. So we had to find a platform and develop a platform that was applicable to everybody. Um, but we, what we also love about this is that it breaks the journey into four achievable action fig pillars um, based on, the, on your terms and is focused on simplicity and speed and it's grounded in the latest science and it gives businesses the ability to, to build a plan that works for them on their terms. And I'll get into that in a second. Um, but you know, I mentioned earlier that it's currently being used by businesses worldwide, large and small. And some of those examples are Houdini, which is maybe some of you are familiar with Houdini, but they're an outerwear brand in, in Sweden, um, but also Ikea and Unilever. So brands large and small are using this platform um, as a guide for their uh, climate action. And we, and we love it and we wanted to bring it and introduce it to all of you. So what we like about this is that obviously it's based on the science-based targets, which say that we must reduce emissions 50% in 10 years and 100% before 2050. But for a lot of us, you know, 100% carbon reduction before 2050 is a big mountain to climb. And it is, it's, and it, but it can be very intimidating and it could you know, force a lot of companies to um, avoid taking action because it is so intimidating. But what the playbook does it, is that it follows this idea called the carbon law. And it says that, you know, we've got 30 years to, to address this challenge. And what we want to do is we want to break down our carbon emissions 50% in the next 10 years. And then over the next 10 years, another 50% of what's left. And over, and over the next 10 years after that, another 50%, which will get us to 100% by 2050. It breaks the challenge down into four achievable segments rather than just trying to attack the 100% before 12050 all at once. And we think that might be, um, that's, that, sent, that approach just might be a little bit easier for us to get our arms around and um, bring more companies into the discussion based on that. But what we also like about this is its focus and it breaks the climate journey into four impact pillars. You know, climate change, as many of you know, is a very complicated approach. Um, there are a lot of rabbit holes you can go down and a lot of ways that we could get involved that might not make an impact. So what the playbook does is that it breaks the journey into four specific areas that we need to address. Number one is reducing your own emissions. And that's scope one and two. Number two, the second pillar is reducing emissions in your supply chain, which is scope three. And how we look at it is that we wanna 
influence um, supply chain partners to adopt the science-based targets. So how can you use your business as a force to apply to your supply chain partners to reduce their emissions 50% over the next, 20, uh, next decade and 100% over the next uh, 30 years? The third is how do you integrate climate change into your business strategy? We need to take climate change and infuse it into your, into your value chain or your values, your business values and your mission, um, your corporate vision, your value proposition, your investments, um, your consumer marketing and your product R&D. How do you become a responsible business? And fourth, um, but certainly not last, is how do you become active in climate policy? This is incredibly important and we want to make this clear that, you know, we really see this as one of the biggest things that every company should be doing right now. So we, as the fourth pillar, we want to get every company that, that adopts this playbook to advocate for meaningful state, federal, and international climate policy. Um, but we're not going to just let you, you know, give you the playbook and walk away. We want to give you the resources and the tools that will help you achieve um, the goals that you've set out. So what we're doing is we've built um, an online resource called the Climate Hub. And it has all the tools, the educational resources, and the connections that businesses might need to facilitate their journey to net zero. And on the Climate Hub, there are a lot of different areas um, to explore, but I'll take you through them very quickly. Um, the educational resources. We're developing a lot of content and educational intelligence that will give all the partners um, really specific action steps and details to achieve what's laid out in those four pillars. So we're creating these um, briefs called playbook briefs. And it's taken each playbook, each, it's taken each pillar and breaking it down into specific action steps and details um, in layman's terms that you can use to achieve um, the emissions, the advocacy, the responsible business pillar, um, anything that you need to really get those pillars achieved. But it also we're having, um, we're working with partners to give you the tools to execute your plans most efficiently. So for example, Climate Neutral has an amazing um, emissions calculator that we're gonna um, bring to you. And the EPA has one as well for your scope three emissions. So how do we bring you some, the, the valuable tools that are gonna help you execute your plan most efficiently? On the responsible business side and the carbon emission side, we're gonna be working with organizations that they're gonna give you opportunities to accelerate your impact. So joining 1% for the planet, um, becoming a B Corp are ways that you can become a more responsible business. Um, working with level 10, which is a renewable energy provider to reduce your emissions through clean energy. Um, we're gonna keep growing our partnerships with organizations in this way to give you all of the, the vetted partnerships that we think are the most impactful. Um, we're also gonna be working with specialists or consultants. So if you need more help in some areas, we have uh, resources for you and, and people and companies that you can work with that will help you um, get to net zero quicker and answer a lot of the questions that you might have that are very in depth. Um, we're gonna be running um, very specific workshops on, based on each pillar um, throughout the year, one each month, that dig really deep into how to execute um, the action steps in each pillar. So for example, how do you reduce your emissions? How do you plan? Um, how do you, the, you know, the renewable energy 101. So every month we're gonna have workshops. We're also gonna have our partners um, give workshops. So let's learn more about climate neutral. Let's learn more about EcoChain and Citizens Climate Lobby. So really kind of give you a lot of insight into a lot of the good work being done by a lot of different organizations and companies out there that'll make your life a lot easier. Um, but on the advocacy side, we wanna direct you to businesses and nonprofits that we recommend that are doing really, really good work on state and federal policy work. So that'll help you become a better climate lobbyist. So um, organizations like Ceres and Citizens Climate Lobby, and as soon as the election is over, you know, we hope to add protector winners to this list for obvious reasons. And then finally, in the spring, an open, or, an open source sharing platform. Because there are a lot of companies in our industry that have figured a lot of this out. And we hope that in order for us to get to where we need to be that much quicker, we can all share that intelligence. So we're going to create a platform that all of us can log on to and use as a resource that are going to foster open source sharing and collaborations to really accelerate, accelerate our peer-to-peer -peer knowledge and our collective progress. So that's going to be coming after the first of the year. 
So we're really excited about the Climate Hub because I think it gives you know, all of you the tools and the resources and the, the partnerships um, that you need to really get this done. You know, obviously a lot of this rests on you. You know, we can't do the work for you, but we can certainly give you the guidance to help you get it done a little bit easier. So this slide just kind of takes you through how we might see it laid out. So every quarter we're gonna focus on a pillar. And the first pillar would be emissions. So we're gonna create playbook briefs and monthly workshops and webinars and content and offer more resources and specialists and organizations that can get you to the place where you can really deliver on, on your goals of 50% before 2030. And the same goes for the supply chain challenge and responsible business and advocacy. And over time, that Climate Hub will be a really robust information source for anyone, no matter when they join, um, to learn more and use as a resource to get this job done. But also we want to make sure that we engage consumers in this because we know, like is what we were just talking about, that consumers want to support brands that share their values. Um, but they also want to go on this journey with you. Um, so we hope that you will use Climate United as a consumer facing seal on your website and at retail and in your marketing so that your consumers will know the good work that you're doing. But again, you know, we're going to make sure that participating companies will have the opportunity to engage with consumers that we know through the 2021 Snowbound Festivals and through our digital platform that reaches literally hundreds of thousands of winter outdoor enthusiasts. Because again, this is, you know, engaging consumers in this is really important. They need to know the good work that you do. But also, we hope that through this journey that you'll engage your consumers in this, especially on the advocacy side. So how does this work? Well, we want every company to commit to the Winter Outdoor Industry Climate Pact. Um, it unifies the industry around a set of achievable principles, as I said, and it indicates your commitment and intent. And then once you've made that commitment, we want you to measure your emissions and plan. Um, we want you to set your, you know, your emissions baseline and focus on those four specific, specific action pillars when you set your plan out that is in line with the science-based targets and then submit that plan to us within 12 months with an annual progress report. And then take the action that you need to get your plan done and access all the information that you need through the Climate Hub. And again, you know, we're gonna be adding more resources to that Climate Hub every week. And over time, it'll be more and more valuable to you and hopefully we'll be such a valuable um, partner and help you to help you really execute your, execute your plan because we know it's not easy. Um, but the fourth part of it is that, you know, we want to recognize the industry's aggregated pro progress um, to media, to our industry peers, and to our consumers. And, you know, through that, we hope that more people will join this. And we hope that, you know, our industry as a whole will be taking this action that's needed. Um, because in order for us to get where we need to be by 2050, it's going to take all of us. So here are the member benefits. Um, obviously, the Climate Pact, it's the first step, and we want you to become, of this, become part of this unified industry force against climate change. Um, we also have the proven framework. Um, the business playbook is that proven framework, and we know it works because it's been working already. And we hope that you'll use it because it works and it makes sense. It's flexible because if we have 10 years to reduce our carbon emissions, it gives you the flexibility of figuring out, you know, what are you going to attack first? How are you going to attack 50% in 10 years? So it lets you kind of call the shots in terms of your carbon reduction and how you're going to become a better advocate um, politically and how you're going to reduce your carbon emissions and become a more responsible business on your terms. Um, but also it, you know, it gives you the opportunity to build that plan based on your company's capabilities and your work in progress and the emissions hotspots where your measures can be prioritized the most. Um, again, it's, a, it's flexible. Um, it outlines the long-term goal and it helps you with the roadmap, but it, it gives you the ability to plan, to set a plan that works for you. Um, the public and peer recognition part of it, I think is really important. And we're gonna, again, track your progress and publicly recognize that progress annually to, the, to peers, to the media and consumers. Um, and then the Climate Hub. Um, which is access to a library of tools and resources and collaborations. 
So just a couple of FAQs um, to get the Q&A started. Um, you know, we created Climate United because we listened to our members and felt that, that our leadership on climate was really important to our members. And again, there are so many member businesses that want to get involved, but really didn't have the guidance they needed. So they didn't engage. And as their trade association, it was really important for us to provide this leadership and added value. And we hope that by doing this, we're bringing new businesses into the climate conversation that might not otherwise have not engaged. Um, and the cost is free to, to SIA members as part of the annual membership. So do I have to be an SIA member? Well, again, the, United, the Climate United Roadmap is only available to S current SIA members. Um, but any winter outdoor industry can join the, the Climate Pact. And I hope that you do. As long as you can commit to those six principles, um, we hope that you'll join the Climate Pact because we need every winter outdoor industry um, business to sign that. And then how do you participate? Well, just go to snowsports.org forward slash climate for all the information. Um, go to the sign up here button and we'll be in touch with the user guide and the access to the playbook and the climate hub. And the same goes for the, the climate pact. Um, but the fourth thing I also wanna say is that, you know, OIA has their climate action core and it, which is a great platform. And NSA has their climate challenge, which, which is an incredibly platform as well, a valuable platform too. Um, that's customized specifically for resorts and, and, and the challenges that they face. So, you know, SI needed a platform for our members that's built for their needs. And we hope that in doing so, we're bringing more businesses into the conversation. But we encourage everyone to take a look at the Climate Action Corps as well to see if that might be a better fit for you. Um, because at the end of the day, we want every business to be taking action. So however they can. And between the three trade groups, we have three solid choices now. But that's the goal, to get everybody involved and by taking the first step, however that happens. So that's all I've got. And um, I hope you guys have some questions because that was quick and there's a lot of information. Um, but please feel free to shoot some questions over in the toolbar and I'll, and I'll answer as many as I can. Thanks so much, Chris, for taking us through that. Um, I know that you mentioned um, having tools and resources. Um, what's, who's the best person to reach out to at SIA um, with any questions um, to get them people started on this journey? Sorry, that's the last slide. Um, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> you can direct all your questions to me. And my email is right there. And I hope that you'll uh, send any questions that you have, because I'm sure there are a lot. Um, but I'm here anytime and would love to talk to you about it. Thank you. Um, we do have one question that has come in. Um, do you want me to read it or do you see it? Yeah, no, I do. Thanks, Mike. Um, yes, we are planning on, on creating some working groups. I think what we're going to do is build those after the first of the year to see exactly where the need is. Um, but I do definitely see some working groups in terms of those pillars. And there could be four working groups, one of them being emissions, an advocacy working group, and a responsible business working group. Um, but again, we'll do that, but probably after January 1st. And then um, to the second part of your question, Mike, you know, how can companies share best practices? Um, again, I, I think that, you know, when we have that open source sharing program or platform, that's going to be the place. Um, we're looking for kind of a platform that's already built right now, um, some software that we can integrate in the site that gives um, us the best opportunity to share those best practices. So we're working on it now. And I, again, that's going to be live probably after the first of the year. Um, but I hope that's going to be uh, used by everybody because I think it's going to be really valuable. Great. It looks like we have one more um, coming in that's just getting typed in right now. Um, so the other one other thing I know that you briefly mentioned was these workshops that we're going mm -hmm. to be hosting. Um, and those were our, do you want to talk about those a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to have workshops every month. Um, and those workshops are going to be designed to dig really deep into each topic of each pillar. So an emissions workshop, and we'll probably have three or four of those digging really deep into a lot of different aspects of emissions reductions and measurements. Um, and then we're going to have, be having workshops on responsible business. How can, you know, every business act more responsibly? Because as many of you, as many as of you know that you've got to walk the walk before we get into this. So 
you know, we've got to change the way we do business. And I think, you know, we're going to have a lot of workshops focused on how can companies really walk the walk in terms of being responsible. And of course, we'll be doing advocacy workshops. How can companies be better climate lobbyists, which is incredibly important. It's not intuitive. So I think a lot of workshops will be helpful and we'll do that in partnership with, you know, protect our winners, we hope, and citizens climate lobby and some other groups that are doing the really good work on that. Um, but our goal with the workshops and the hub is not to reinvent what's already been being done out there. You know, we want to pull from organizations and businesses that have already done the good work and use climate United as a platform to aggregate all of that intelligence in one place for you. So, um, uh, Sam, your question, you indicate that the program has been working already. Is there data that shows a decrease in climate change? Well, Sam, I think there's, you know, a data that's going to show uh, a decrease in carbon emissions by the companies that have undertaken this program for sure. So, you know, we hope that over time, you know, I don't think we can measure a decrease in climate change right now, but we hope that over time, certainly over the next decade, we can get there, but we can certainly measure a decrease in carbon emissions. Um, yeah, Paul, um, you're an Australian brand gearing up to launch in the USA in the not too distant future. Do you see Climate United as being relevant to global brands or is it more USA specific? Um, I think it's applicable to global brands. I mean, the playbook is a global tool. So we can certainly, you know, you can certainly use that as a playbook um, for you because it's currently being used in, in Europe right now. And in terms of the climate pact, um, the winter outdoor industry does not just live in the United States. So we've got to act as an international community on this. So we welcome your participation in that as well. Um, Howard, there's so many climate pledges and commitment choices. How do you navigate the, in challenging, the challenge in crafting this? You know, I think, you know, there are a few climate pledges and commitment choices for sure. Um, there was not one for the winter outdoor industry. And we felt that, you know, there is one for the fashion industry, for example, and there's a lot of other ones, like you said, but we don't have one. And we felt that it was really important um, to show our unity and, we sh and to show our commitment to this. So, you know, you've got to obviously make your own choices, but I would say that if you're part of this industry, that, you know, this, this charter is something that you really need to take a look at because it's showing uh, unity uh, for an industry that you're part of. Um, Laura, um, I'm, what is the model for capturing and recording the pillars and the goals that are being met? Well, you may have missed this in the beginning as you, as you wrote, but when you create your plan before you get into the actual execution, um, your plan will have metrics and, um, and benchmarks based in that that are going to um, show that specific goals have been met. So it's going to be up to you and your plan in terms of um, being being met. Um, but that said, you know, we're going to for every, we've got to aggregate this information um, so that we understand where the how the good work and and the progress that the industry is making on this. So we're going to um, be sending you a very simple form that you can fill out in terms of carbon emissions and where you were and where you're at at the end of the 12 months that you've been working on this. So we're working through that now. Um, but we're going to make sure that, you know, obviously we want your plans to be as robust as they can, but the, the form that the reporting form that you're going to send back to us um, will be pretty simple, but will be focused on the main metrics that we really need to, to gauge the, pro the progress as an industry. All right, Chris. Um, mm -hmm. I know that we've got a whole bunch of questions um, and I know we've done a good, you've done a good job of getting to mm -hmm. a bunch of them. Um, I don't know if you have any closing thoughts that you want to uh, go through right now, um, but I know that if some of these other questions we'll follow up with people directly, um, yeah. definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I just want to say thank you all for joining us today. I know this was quick and was probably a lot of information to take in, you know, but we're really excited about this because I think it's a platform that, you know, everybody in the winter outdoor industry should be taking a look at, especially the climate pact. And if you need that additional guidance, the, the playbook is there and we're here to guide you through that journey. But if we're gonna do anything on climate change and make any progress, and we've got literally 30 years to do this, 
um, we've all got to be doing something. And taking that first step is really, really important. And, you know, we felt that a lot of companies in our industry haven't taken that first step for whatever reason. And, you know, we now have the climate pack, which is that first step. And we have that second part of it, which is, you know, the, the, the playbook, which will give you the tools and the resources to get this thing done. And again, you know, we've, there are a lot of platforms out there that will help you as well. NSAA has an incredibly good platform. OA has a great platform as well. So, you know, we hope that you'll take a look at all of this. And the goal is to get you going in the right direction. So however you do it is the goal here. And we just want our industry to, to take responsibility and, and, and be the advocates that we should be. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Um, and like I said in the beginning, if um, you want missed any parts of this or want to rewatch any of it or share it with your teams or anybody else, um, it will be posted on the video recording will be posted on the SA website later this afternoon. Um, so please go ahead and reference that. Um, Chris's contact information is on the screen right here, um, and he's a totally open door with this stuff. So please go ahead and reach out to him. Um, and then let us know if you have any other questions, but thanks so much for taking time out of your afternoon uh, to listen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.